Welcome to the Future of Field Service podcast. I'm your host, Sarah Nicastro. Well, everyone, that is a wrap. Uh, last week was the last of five Future of Field Service live tour events uh, for 2022. We ended the series in Austin, Texas, and uh, went out with a bang with uh, another great event. Uh, so if you follow along the podcast regularly, you will know that this year is the first time we've taken the conversations we have here out into the real world uh, to take this platform and turn it into um, a community. So we visited uh, Paris, London, Frankfurt, Stockholm, and just ended in Austin. Um, so I just want to give you a little bit of a recap and uh, talk about you know what you can expect next in terms of the content from the events and the future events. Um, so we started the day with Max James. Uh, Max is an Air Force Academy graduate, pilot who was shot down twice in Vietnam, Fortune uh, 500 entrepreneur, uh, and author of book, uh, The Harder I Fall, The Higher I Bounce. Um, you might remember Max from uh, an earlier podcast, episode 148, where he joined to talk about some of the lessons he shares in his book. And it was really fun to have Max join uh, and hear some of those stories live. Um, he has a very interesting um, history and background and uh, a lot of lessons that he's learned along the way that he's now uh, not only put into his book, but came and talked with us about in person. So um, a lot of that was around uh, resilience um, and talking about how resilience as an individual leader is necessary for resilience as a business. Um, talking about how, you know, leaders um, have to uh, understand that failure is, is part of success. Um, he talks about a cartoon that uh, he shares in his book um, that is a knight uh, who is very beat up. Um, and the caption says, some days the dragon wins. Um, and so we had a conversation with all the other folks in the room about how there have been plenty of uh, days over the last few years that the dragon has won, but how we all have to keep on going and um, persevere to succeed. So uh, next, we welcomed Sasha Ilyukin, who is the SVP of Customer Service Operations at Tetra Pak. Um, and we had uh, a conversation around Sasha's current focus um, on human centricity. Uh, we talked about the reasoning for that and the understanding that while customer experience is obviously incredibly important, um, that starts with uh, the employee experience, employee engagement, employee satisfaction, and making sure that we understand um, that uh, we're, we're human, our employees are human, and we all need to relate to each other in a human way. So Sasha talked through um, what that focus looks like for him now, some of the areas that he's uh, working on, including um, engagement and recognition, um, you know, mental health, uh, how technology plays a role, um, how one-on-one -on -one communication and, um, you know, the impact that mid-level management has, all sorts of different things. So, um, you know, I shared with the group that I think this is an area we'll see increasing focus on over the next few years, um, because I think that as we went off on our quest to, uh, you know, provide the ultimate customer experience, sometimes we've overlooked the importance of the employee side. So that was a great conversation. Um, we then moved on to a panel discussion with Roy Dockery, who is the vice president of field operations at Flock Safety and Katie Chandler, who is the Vice President of Learning and Development at DuraServe. Um, and we talked about everything related to tackling today's uh, talent challenges. So um, again, if you follow along, you know that the talent gap um, is something that has come up in um, every city that we visited on the live tour, it comes up very regularly in podcast conversations. So we talked about sort of the whole continuum of this um, from you know, how are we recruiting, um, starting with how are we clarifying exactly what we need for each role? Are we holding ourselves to, you know, outdated um, standards? How are we communicating what those roles look like in a way that is compelling for today's, um, you know, potential employees? Um, 
how are we uh, improving diversity of applicants and ultimately hires, um, all the way through to uh, obviously learning and development, which is Katie's area of expertise and talking about how as we bring on people with more aptitude but less experience, how that evolves what we need to do in terms of training, um, learning and development. Um, we talked about uh, retention and everything that falls into that category and how sometimes when we talk about the talent gap, we focus a lot on the challenges around getting new people in. Um, and again, can overlook the uh, focus we need to put on keeping the good people that we do have. Um, so it was a really interesting conversation as well. Um, then we broke for a little bit of networking and lunch before we welcomed uh, Sonia Roshek, who is the vice president of field services at BNT Group. Uh, Sonia started her career in the military, um, then got into telecommunications, uh, now running field services uh, at the VP level, and has found herself um, often uh, one of few, if not the only woman um, in many male dominated spaces. So we talked a lot about, you know, the experiences she's had and what she's learned from them. Um, and what she would want folks who are focused on bringing more women into field service to think about from those experiences. Um, so, you know, I think it's a topic that is very layered and there's a lot of different things to address. Um, but uh, I always think that there is power in hearing an individual's story and thinking about um, what you can kind of take from that and, and you know, increase your perspective with. We finished with um, Giener Osbul, who is the president and COO of Smart Care Equipment Solutions, talking about um, resilience, resurgence, and re-innovation. So we had a, a conversation with Giener about um, his, his personal development as a leader um, over the past few years. His role has expanded significantly. Um, smart care is growing very rapidly. And of course, that was all happening in the midst of uh, the pandemic. So we talked with him um, uh, from a, an individual leader perspective about how he navigated that. Um, and then from a business perspective, we talked about, you know, some of the steps that smart care took during the pandem pandemic to um, have business continuity what the resurgence has looked like and some of the challenges that they face uh, in that, um, including issues with uh, supply chain and parts availability and, and how they're navigating that um, and how they're sort of resetting innovation. So how they are getting back to um, the uh, longer term potential and view they have for the company uh, that was sort of set pre-COVID um, and a bit disrupted. Uh, so that was a great session as well. After that, we had a group think uh, where we came together and just sort of talked about um, a variety of issues and uh, allowed people to weigh in on one another's questions um, and finish the day with uh, some fun Texas style uh, happy hour and networking. Um, so it was a great day. Um, all five were great. Uh, someone asked me not too long ago um, which event was my favorite, and I said that's a very unfair question. Um, I do genuinely mean that. Uh, they were all different. Um, obviously, that is the nature of having people share their individual stories. Um, each story is unique. So that was really uh, a fun experience to hear so many different perspectives. Um, and they all had different uh, focus areas, different uh, points of value. I would say the common thread is, um, you know, really seeing firsthand um, it being reinforced how important community is. I think that service leaders tend to be very, very, um, you know, busy, uh, often overworked um, and uh, sometimes overwhelmed and taking uh, just a day away from the day to day. Uh, operations or the grind to um, sit down and engage with people that have uh, the same challenges that are working towards the same opportunities is not only comforting, but inspiring. So um, it was an honor to be able to uh, bring that to life in those five cities. Uh, and I'm very grateful for the opportunity to do so. Um, and uh, what will happen next? Uh, so um, one thing is now that I am uh, going to have at least a little break uh, from travel. 
um, I can dig into, you know, some of the uh, specifics of the content shared during the events and look for ways to share that with you all. Um, so whether that's through articles or releasing some of the sessions as podcasts, I want to make sure that, you know, rather than a quick overview, you know, you have an opportunity to get some of the detail as well. So stay tuned um, on the podcast and on futurefieldservice.com or on LinkedIn for that. Um, and, you know, we haven't completely uh, breathed uh, since uh, Austin, uh, since everything ended, um, but we have connected quickly as a team. And, um, you know, at least uh, at this point, we do plan to do um, these events again in 2023. I don't know exactly what that will look like, um, but as soon as I do, I will certainly share with you. So if you weren't able to join us in 2022, hopefully you will have the opportunity to do so in 2023. So uh, thank you again so much to the speakers um, that came to share their insights in each city, the attendees uh, that um, came and engaged and uh, connected, um, the uh, team um, that helped me plan these events, uh, Polly and Joanna, um, for the incredible work that they did on the uh, logistics and execution. And of course, a huge thank you to IFS for sponsoring these events and allowing us to bring this type of community and thought leadership to um, these five cities without having to charge a fee for folks to attend. So um, thank you all. Uh, stay tuned uh, for more to come at futureoffieldservice.com. Follow us on LinkedIn. You can also find us on Twitter at the Future of FS. And as always, the Future of Field Service podcast is published in partnership with IFS. You can learn more at ifs.com. Thank you for listening.